Hi, I'm Lisa, registered dietitian with Healthline, and today we're gonna talk about anything that you might be able to do to lose belly fat. Now, before we get started, I want you to know there's no magical food you can eat that will shrink your stomach. But before you click away, there is some research around certain habits or types of foods to incorporate and activities that you can do that may help you lose weight or belly fat around your middle section. So today we're gonna to talk about what those research back tips are and things you can do that might help you lose belly fat. We're talking about belly fat, what we're actually talking about are two different types of fat. There's the subcutaneous layer of fat, which is found all over your body, and that's right under your skin. There's also some around your midsection, but your abdomen can have special kind of fat called visceral fat, and that's the deeper fat that lives around your organs like your liver, and too much visceral fat can increase your risk of certain chronic conditions like diabetes, heart disease, etc. So that's why doctors and other healthcare providers sometimes use waist circumference as a way to measure disease risk. And anything over 35 inches for women or 40 inches for men is linked with a higher risk of those chronic conditions. So around your belly, there's two types of fat, that surface layer subcutaneous fat and that deeper level fat that really impacts our health called visceral fat. One type of nutrient that you should eat more of to help reduce belly fat is soluble fiber. And that's the type of fiber that found in foods like fruits, vegetables, legumes, and whole grains like oatmeal. Now, people who eat more fiber over time are less likely to accumulate fat around their midsection. So higher fiber diets are linked with not gaining weight around your belly over time. Again, it's not a magical cure, but having some of those higher fiber foods in your diet also help keep you full for longer. So as anyone knows who's ever been on a diet, the last thing you wanna feel is hungry all the time, right? As soon as you eat, you're hungry again. Eating meals and snacks that have fiber in them help keep you full, you're more satisfied, you're less likely to overeat. Those fiber-rich foods also have other health-promoting compounds in them for the most part, right? We're talking fruits, vegetables, whole grains. They're really good for you and they may help reduce reduce the risk of having too much belly fat over time. We actually created a whole video on fiber. We can drop the link here so you can check that out if you wanna learn more. Another nutrient you wanna add more of to your diet if you're trying to lose belly fat is protein. High protein diets are associated with having lower belly fat, so people who eat more protein tend to have less fat around their midsection. Protein, just like fiber, also helps keep you full. So when you have meals and snacks that have protein, you're again more satisfied, you're less likely to have those blood sugar spikes because protein takes longer to digest. So focusing on protein can be a really great way to help you stay full on your eating plan. Protein also helps you maintain muscle mass when you're losing weight, right? So there's no way to target just your midsection, but overall weight loss can help you lose belly fat. And protein is really important because as you lose weight, it helps you maintain muscle. Muscle is really important for so many reasons, keeps you strong, helps keep you active, reduce your injury risk, but also burns calories at a higher rate. So it's really important to hang on to that muscle mass as you're losing weight and high protein diets can help you do that. You don't have to count every single gram of protein that you eat. If you like tracking, that's certainly one way to do it. But one thing I recommend is just making sure you're having a good high quality source of protein at most of your meals and snacks. So really be mindful of, does this meal have a protein source? Good protein sources include meats from chicken, red meat, pork, fish, seafood, also beans, tofu, legumes, dairy, and eggs. Now you know which types of foods and nutrients to include more of in your diet if you want to lose belly fat, but what should you cut back on? One nutrient is added sugar. Now added sugar is something that most of us get too much of in our diets. You'll find it in sodas and sweetened beverages, desserts of course, but also in breads and crackers and other places you might not think to look. Increased added sugar is associated with higher levels of belly fat. Eating too much added sugar also makes it harder to lose weight or maintain your weight because you're getting a fair 
fair amount of calories without a lot of nutrients. So when I talk about added sugar, I'm not talking about the natural types of sugar found in fruits and dairy, but anything that you would add to foods, any way to sweeten foods that uses sugar, be it sugar, high fructose corn syrup, honey, brown rice syrup, there are a lot of different names for added sugar. So being mindful of your added sugar intake, you don't have to cut it out completely, but just cutting back and again, being more mindful can help you lose weight and also may help you lose fat around your midsection. Another drink you might wanna cut back on is alcohol. There is, you know, the idea of a beer belly or just if you drink, you're gonna get all your fat around your middle. Research is mixed around whether alcohol is directly correlated with weight gain around your midsection. Some studies have found yes, some studies have not found a correlation, but what we do know about alcohol is it's not great for your health and there have been some observational studies that have found people who drink alcohol in higher amounts tend to have more fat around their middle and especially that deeper type of visceral fat, which we know isn't great for our health. So some alcohol in moderation can be okay, but what we know is no level of alcohol consumption is really great for you. And if you do wanna lose weight, it can be tricky to do when you're consuming alcohol because it's higher in calories. And again, not giving you any nutrition. So if you do like to have a drink, drink in moderation, which is no more than one drink a day for women or two drinks a day for men. And remember Remember that cutting back might help you lose weight more easily and also reduce fat around your belly. It's not just about what you eat when it comes to belly fat. There are lifestyle choices and factors that come into play as well. One thing that's associated with higher levels of belly fat is high levels of stress. Now, don't get stressed out. It's okay, we all feel stressed, but learning ways to manage your stress more effectively can help, one, your overall stress levels and health, but two, reduce those levels of belly fat. Stress increases a hormone called cortisol. That's your stress hormone. When we have increased levels of cortisol, it's actually associated with higher levels of belly fat. Stress can also cause you to crave those high calorie, highly palatable foods like brownies and chips and pizza. No one's stress eating salads, right? So trying to adopt practices that helps get your stress under control can be really helpful for your overall health and also for levels of belly fat. So practicing things like yoga or meditation, exercise and movement, getting outside, making sure you're getting enough sleep and potentially talking to someone. Just find something you can do to help those higher stress levels for again, your health and your belly fat. Now, since we're talking about food, I wanna mention here that sometimes when people try to eat healthier, they end up feeling stressed about everything they put in their mouth. They feel afraid that they can't eat a carb or this type of fat or this type of food. So try not to stress too much about your diet. You can make healthier choices and sometimes eat foods that may not be the most nutritious, but it's really about your overall eating habits. And remembering that stressing about everything you eat may be doing you more harm than good. Now let's talk movement. Exercise isn't necessarily helpful for weight loss, but people who lose weight and keep it off over time tend to have exercise added into their daily life. Exercise is also really, really good for you beyond just weight loss. Now, when it comes to belly fat, it's not like you can do a few crunches or a plank and immediately target your midsection. Those work your abdominal muscles, but it's about overall moving your body more. Now there is research on cardio versus strength training. And what you really wanna do to see the most bang for your buck is combine the two. So you add some cardiovascular exercises, which is great for upping your calorie burn, also really great for your heart health. So things like walking, swimming, jogging, biking, and also do some strength training, which again, helps you build muscle and avoid muscle loss loss if you're trying to lose weight. And again, adding that muscle into your body can help you burn more calories over time and prevents your metabolism from slowing down as you lose weight as quickly. So two types of exercise, really important. I think, you know, you could really do a deep dive into the research and try to pick out which is more important or which type of cardio should you do. But at the end of the day, most of us just aren't moving enough. So find some activities you like, start small. We have a great resource of fitness guides on healthline.com and on our YouTube page. So check that out if you need some tips.
Another thing you need to make sure you're doing enough of to help reduce belly fat and improve your health is get enough sleep. So sleeping less than five hours a night was associated with higher belly fat levels compared to people who slept seven hours or more. Now, sometimes these things are out of your control. Maybe you have a shift working job or you work two jobs and it's just hard to get that good chunk of sleep, but there are certain things you can do to help your sleep hygiene. Exposing yourself to light in the morning can help with your natural circadian rhythms, plus having a consistent bedtime and a consistent wake time can really help. And a lot of us are guilty of this, myself included sometimes, but try to turn off the screens, which means no staring at your phone right before you go to bed. Again, good for your overall health. Not getting enough sleep can also lead you to crave those higher calorie, higher fat foods during the day. So if you're trying to lose weight and belly fat and just improve your health, sleep's really important. I hope you learned something and have decided to maybe try out some of these helpful tips that may help reduce your belly fat. When it comes to losing weight or losing belly fat, again, there is nothing magical you can do to target that specific area, but these things do have research to support them that may help you on your journey. It's also important to remember that fat distribution is based a lot on genetics. So if you look around, you probably see people in all different body types and sizes and shapes. And a lot of that you can't change even if you change up your habits, but you can definitely take steps to improve your health and maybe also lose some weight and belly fat by adopting adopting some of these tips like eating more fiber and protein and cutting back on added sugar and alcohol. And again, taking care of that stress, sleep and movement throughout the day. If you liked what you saw, let us know in the comments down below. If there's any other nutrition questions you have, I'd love to answer them in an upcoming video. And don't forget to like, hit that bell and subscribe to learn more from me and Healthline.